and welcome to this video. I am currently filming at 11 o'clock at night, so if I'm speaking in quite a soft way, or it's quite quiet, I will boost the audio best I can and talk as normally as I can, but I have neighbours, I have a baby, I don't want to wake anyone up, and this is the best time that I have to film this. I am sat in front of what I kind of dub the big tree, but this is where the presents live, and I will be adding to them this evening. So I am going to try and get everything wrapped within this video, hopefully, aside from gifts that are missing parts, so there's a few people where I want to get multiple things wrapped together, and also people that I know watch my videos, so I will not be wrapping anything for a couple of family members who I am fully aware will watch this video. I'm just going to chat away as I wrap things because that is how these things work from my understanding. I have already wrapped most of the baby's stuff. I got him some much larger clothing. In hindsight, I need to boost to 6 to 9 wardrobe, but I didn't realise that when I was buying for him for Christmas. So he's got some 12 to 18 month stuff some new cot sheets because he needed them and a few little toys so he's got a couple of sort of soft jingling toys like the toys he already has and some bath ducks which i know he won't get very much out of now but we all love bath time we do it as a family so that's everything that i have wrapped so far it's what you miss out on i will show you the rest of what i have got most of this i think will be for my husband the one thing he's already had is his New, he has new hiking boots and because of the weather we've had, the snow, he's already had those out because he's needed them, he's not got the other boots, so those have been opened early. But the rest of it, he knows about some of it, not all of it. Aha! A baby item I didn't wrap yet. This book is adorable. Another baby item I have not wrapped yet. <laughs> I think this is everything. Okay, tape and scissors acqu acquired. Let's get started. So I thought I would do a bit of a chatty, chatty video. Maybe some of this I'll time lapse, but I thought I would just sort of ramble on a little bit about, I don't know, plans for the new year, how I'm taking to new motherhood, that sort of thing. Um, if you have any questions, Leave them in the comments. I don't think anyone will. I don't think I'm seeing that, getting that many views, but if you did want to ask anything about anything, then let me know. Um, right, I think we'll do the light paper for this one. So this one is a Winnie the Pooh mug. So for my friend Robert, I have got the Winnie the Pooh mug that's in this box, I'm keeping it in the box because it'll wrap nicer. Um, these Winnie the Pooh socks, they're adorable. I think I already took the price off of them. Then this little bookmark, which is from Etsy. And it's again Winnie the Pooh. She's having a Winnie the Pooh era at the moment and I am just encouraging it. And then this, which I will pop out to show you guys, is a notebook. But my God, this thing is stunning. Um, I'm not going to open it, but it does, I had a flick through and it has like a map of 100 acre wood and some illustrations and stuff and that is gorgeous. Um, it's from Disney themselves and it was, I believe it was actually in the clearance because it was only because I looked up when the period that it came up for me at all. So I don't know if they do it anymore, but you're welcome to have a look at Disney's website if it's something that you feel someone in your life would enjoy. I was thinking the first 
topic I would talk about this paper is breastfeeding motherhood wise um, I believe my baby is classed as exclusively breastfed we do one bottle a day typically sometimes it's more than that sometimes he takes no bottles at all that's not down to his preference the baby that is that's just the way the cookie crumbles in terms of when we need the milk what for if we have bottles in the fridge if we don't so the way that i we've been kind of working things is i have a big electric spectra breast pump and I will occasionally pump with that. It's usually just if I'm really uncomfortable, to be honest, and that has been getting less and less. So the best breast pump will go back at some point. We hired ours, um, and we have had it for three months, less than three months. It's about 30 good a month. It's Probably, especially if it ends up going back next month, it will have been cheaper to hire than to buy. And um, I also don't have to have it sitting around my house, being another baby thing I might hold on to just in case we have another one and pressure up the space. But I've really enjoyed the Spectra. I just use it a lot less now. Um, but I do pump occasionally and store that milk but typically how I express is just to use a collection cup for letdown um, I use the Hucker ladybirds and that generally over the course of breastfeeding almost every feed will fill up a bottle or two depending on which feeds I remember to stick the letdown cup on for feeding has been going pretty well all things considered we we had a tough time with it at the beginning and i think in hindsight it wasn't as bad as i thought it was but i got really really chapped nipples and he was struggling to latch and i was worried with holding him and things and if i was doing things right and you just you're very much in that space as a as a new parent and yeah it just wasn't it wasn't easy but now that we are we've worked through that it has been 100 percent worth having worked through that like he feeds really really well and he's a very very flexible flexible eater and he's putting on weight and everything as he should be. The only thing I struggle with a bit at the moment with feeding is just making sure that I am getting enough energy, calories and like nutrients and stuff that I am not completely drained by the end of the day from having fed the baby. Like he's getting everything he needs. I'm not entirely convinced that my body has everything <laughs> it needs left afterwards, but. And then this bag, it says JoJo Mart. So let's get those wrapped up. And then there's a print in here that is of some little Stardew chickens. Cute. So let's get to wrapping these. I was going to talk a little bit about my birth story. So I had a medicated birth. I had an induction. So I'm just going to get that out of the way if you're wanting to hear about an all natural birth. That's that's not what you're getting. <laughs> um, but I had a really positive birth which for what I had done, you probably wouldn't expect. So I ended up having a induction and an episiotomy, which was, <laughs> it was 
wasn't as bad a recovery as I thought it would be, but I don't know if that was just sheer determination. I don't know if I'd, if I'd been less determined to feel better whether it would have happened as quickly. Um, I did end up getting a infection, which was a bit scary for all involved and honestly the worst part of the whole experience. So I, I had my waters break at like God knows what time, like 6 a.m. or something on the day he was born, or the day he was due, sorry. And my waters broke and nothing happened. I didn't start contracting at all. Lots of people start contracting after their water spray. It didn't happen for me. I had like a few bits here and there, nothing, nothing to write home about. <laughs> and in the end, I had to go in and be induced. They gave me a tablet, not an oral tablet. And that had some hormones in to get labor going. It unfortunately didn't do quite enough. We were so close to being there, but in the end they had to put me on hormone drip just because they didn't want to let it go 24 hours with my waters broken, having not delivered my baby. So I had oxytocin in a drip. Unfortunately, the frustration was they put my cannula in my right hand. I am right-handed, which meant that I couldn't do anything to really distract myself. We bought sort of switches and things with my husband had popped home he could get things but because i couldn't use my hand i couldn't even really go on my phone to text or anything like it was uncomfortable and if i was to do it again i would have kind of pushed more for them to have the cannula in my left hand so i could do a lot more but that's not how it panned out so i was a bit stuck but then i like the contractions really kicked off i went from zero dilation so it was a long process i got to five centimeters with just a bit of gas and air towards the tail end not much else but i was so so tired because we kicked off this process at about 11 on the sunday sunday morning and at three in the on the monday morning i was just exhausted i didn't get much sleep obviously and every time i was contracting it was waking me up so it was just it was exhausting i so i got an epidural that really helped they told me i would get some rest unfortunately baby boy's heart rate started doing funny things and i didn't get any rest <laughs> they kept coming in and checking him and then they were they checked me again and i was eight centimeters i think they broke a bit more water i went to 10 they were like oh we could give you a bit of time just to you know rest before birth, giving birth if you'd like and then they looked and he was like ready to go and they were like oh i guess you're giving birth now so <laughs> that last section of the birth went really really quickly <laughs> and he was born at 7 30 in the morning and that was it really the midwives were lovely the doctor was lovely i ended up having a episiotomy i don't remember them asking me to be honest with you but it was fine i'm a fairly chilled person when it comes to most things so <laughs> i was like okay I guess that's the thing and I probably I say I probably consented to it it's not it doesn't sound great but you know what can I do they got the baby out and that's their job <laughs> and yeah I was in hospital for a little bit longer mainly just the baby's blood sugars because he was ended up being born 24 hours after my waters had broken so they needed to just keep tabs on him for a little while but he ended up being absolutely fine and we got to go home the next day that night with him was absolutely terrifying that first night like there wasn't many other people in the postpartum ward with me but like just i didn't really sleep i hadn't slept much the night before so it was just horrendous 
Like, it was great having him there, but my God, it was awful, awful, awful trying to stay awake. Yeah. Right, I'm going to probably time-lapse wrapping some of these and stick a video on because this is going to be a very long process and if I keep trying to think of things to talk about at the same time, I will just never get this done. It's gotta be about midnight by now. <laughs> paper for the last two. We've got Don't Worry Little Crab and these wooden alphabet blocks. These are so heavy. Um, the alphabet blocks say they are, just lift this up I think, the alphabet blocks say they are for 18 months plus but I, I suspect my child will have a great time kicking over a tower of them. So I thought I'd finish up this video by just having a quick chat about what we're doing with baby and Christmas plans. So, we aren't doing anything really. <laughs> Firstly, we are doing presents for him because <laughs> I'm a bit like, why not? He won't be, as far as I'm aware, as far as we've discussed, receiving anything from Santa. He's not obviously not old enough to understand the concept and um, I just didn't see the point in doing that this year but he is receiving gifts because it's it's an easy way of us gathering things that we would quite like for him really um, this goddamn tape every time where I put it where's it gone so yeah, it's a, it's a nice way of getting hold of things that we would like for him and a good excuse to bump up his toy stash and refresh it a little bit, which even just for my sanity is nice, just to have a few extra new books and things. I know that doing the same thing over and over is supposed to be, like in terms of reading and stuff, specifically quite good for babies and for their language is what I've kind of found out. But, um, does my nothing, so we'll have a little bit of variety, a little bit of spice. And then, because he's three months, but he has sort of started teething, and I think this is going to be quite a long process. He's not cutting any teeth. The gums aren't looking like they're about to cut teeth, but he is chewing his hands and drooling something fierce. So the one thing I would like to do for Christmas this year is I think I'm going to hire a dress for Christmas day. We're not rubbing anywhere. However, I would just really like to have something that is completely comfortable and designed for breastfeeding in. So I think we're gonna hire one of the proper like zippy ones that are like 200 quid. Why are breastfeeding dresses 200 quid? I'd love to know. I would absolutely love to know. <laughs> and why are the breastfeeding items of clothing that are not 200 quid always maternity like I don't hugely want to be wearing stuff that has room for a baby while I've already had the baby and I'm breastfeeding you know like I I get it for the first bit of postpartum but when I wanted to sort of get my style back or I'm thinking of keeping places longer term or if you think you're breastfeeding longer term I don't want bump space <laughs> So I would, I would love to know the logic behind that. But apart from that, I'm, we're wanting just to stay in. Honestly, I'm hoping just to be able to feed the baby whenever he's hungry, all of that good stuff. Oh. Alright, I will switch the presents being wrapped in there. 
my mum knows that she is receiving this. This is not any great spoiler or surprise. And yeah, uh, we're going to hopefully go for a lovely walk. I think I will probably film on Christmas Day because it is just us if Kel is okay with that. And I may try and get that video up Christmas, the end of Christmas Day, as I have done in previous years. I have a video from last year's Christmas that I just didn't get to editing. So that will go up probably Christmas Eve. Um, if there's anything you guys would like to see for the end of Breast of Vlogmas, let me know. I am in the works of sorting out a zero to three month thrift haul, and I am also going to do a three to six month one. It's difficult because he's wearing thrifted three to six stuff, so it's just getting it all clean. And when you have a baby, staying on top of the laundry is an absolute nightmare. We are, you'll probably see in a video at some point, but we're going to the cinema this week, me and the baby. We're gonna go out and see the new Matilda film. That's very exciting. And festive, I think we're gonna go to, so obviously you guys saw the Winter's Day video. If not, oh, it's, it was a beautiful day. I'd love it if you guys could go and watch that video. Um, but that was a National Trust property called Nyman's. We're hoping to go to a property called Sheffield Park, which is also really lovely. And they have a Christmas trail on as well. So with any luck, we will get to go and see that at some point. I'm hoping we might get to do it next weekend, but we will see how time pans out. That's way too much wrapping paper for that object. <laughs> But on that note, I am going to wrap this last present and go to bed. It is about quarter to one in the morning. Hopefully I can get about an hour's sleep before the baby wakes up for his next feed. I might try and eat something before I go to bed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you for your continued love and things on Vlogmas. And if you have any questions you'd like to ask me about motherhood or Christmas or anything, please just leave them in the comments down below and I will answer them in some format. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching.